In Los Angeles, the nation's second largest school district will now close. We got the announcement that schools will be shutting down effective Monday. Monday, March 16th, they will all be closed to students. It really and truly is unprecedented. The health experts were warning that it was all but inevitable. Massive impact for all the children now spending the school day at home. We're now at a point where the balance has shifted and the appropriate path is to close schools. It was like a avalanche of questions. How long would this go on? And obviously, how was it going to affect our programming and, and the ability for staff to keep working? There was concern. Um, how long is this going to last? Um, my first thought was, what does a naturalist do from home? When the pandemic started, uh, it, the future looks sort of bleak for uh, education, especially outdoor education. Um, if, if we can't be with our students, how can we do experiential learning? It was, uh, it was a little overwhelming and, you know, we adapt and we're getting through it. Life is still real. Kids still need to be educated. What can I do? Uh, what is my service? Outdoor and environmental education programs stand out because they are hands-on, multi-sensory, and really address multiple learning modalities or different ways people learn. And that really is what sets us apart. How do you do outdoor school without being able to go outside? And for years, I've been doing, I've been working outdoor education since 1986. And for years, it's teach, outside, teach things that can't be duplicated in the classroom. I mean, we love just being out on trails, hiking, teaching live in person, you know, getting our hands dirty. And so to think how to get your hands dirty without getting your hands dirty. <laughs> and now all of a sudden it was take your lessons and turn them into something that can be done on a Google slide. A lot of times we get a lot of kids that especially within this pandemic have become so adapted to just seeing everything via screen. But we don't really, we didn't really have any interaction with kids. So it was a challenge and we didn't just want to create another program to go on a screen. We wanted to, to figure out a way to maintain that engagement in person safely, not only for our students, but for our staff. The journey to the current Ecovan program was, uh, was, was not a straight line. Two weeks into the program, we, we had challenges. Due to the age of the vans, they started to break down and needed constant repair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they had their better days. You would get flat tires. Uh, the engine light was always going on. I drove it the first day and the check engine light came on. And that was the end of that van. Um, yeah, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't pleasant, if you will. I used my personal van to take the supplies uh, to and from the different parks. The idea was, wouldn't it be great if we had new vans, right? And, and vans that were specifically built for this type of mobile science program. Number one thing is space. So the old vans were pretty small. We had to stack the boxes, and if I needed something underneath, then I had to move all the boxes to get to one box that I needed. We were just kind of keeping it compact down to as 
least boxes as possible. So at that point, that's when I picked up the phone and called our, our partners for nearly a decade, which is the Skyhook Foundation. They said, okay, we'll get back to you. And sure enough, within less than a week, they did. and the Skyhook Foundation and its partners delivered. It's great that we can use the vans, fill them up with all kinds of science activities and get out to the kids and so they can get outside, and get their hands dirty and, and uh, have some so, sort of normalcy that they're used to in learning. We are really emphasizing social and emotional learning and making sure that we leverage the outdoors so that kids can find ways to lower their stress and anxiety during this time. The idea came about, why don't we just go visit the, our students where they're at, which is these park sites. As the pandemic was carrying on, in about August, Jerry Salazar from the Office of Outdoor Education with LAUSD reached out to our Assistant General Manager Vicki Israel and we had a conversation as far as how we can create something that works for both sides. After a full day of being on screen and doing the distance learning, the LAUSD Ecovan staff comes onto our site and works with the participants outdoors where they're getting physical movement, they're getting hands-on instruction and learning about things that maybe they haven't touched on for a while, which is environmental literacy and STEM. What we have seen is an eagerness to learn, an eagerness to get back out there and to experience something new. And what we're having a, an issue with is getting them to want to go home at the end of the day. She was a third grader and she was really into one of the activities, but her parents showed up to to pick her up to take her home, and she really didn't want to leave. I mean, she really did not want to leave. She made arrangements with her parents to make sure that the second visit, she they didn't come early to pick her up. So the interaction that our students are getting as they are working with the LAUSD Ecovan staff is amazing. So what comes to mind if I say the word system? You might think of a video game system, a computer, or even a car. Systems are things that are made up of different things that work together for a common purpose. A car uses tires, an engine, and a chassis, among other things, to be a car. So, if you think about it, Earth is a system. It's actually made up of four different things. The biosphere, the atmosphere, the geosphere, and the hydrosphere. My colleagues are working on four vans that represent each of the systems. Today, they're going to be showing you a few activities that highlight a couple of those systems so we can better understand together, along with our friends at the parks, about each system. So, with that being said, take it away, Storm. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about acids and bases, which is really cool. There's a scale called a pH scale. We're not going to go too much into what pH is, but just so you know, pH goes from 0 to 14. And it has acids and bases and things we call neutral. So what we're going to do is we're going to find out if some of our household items are acidic or if they're basic. We have a baking soda, salt, vinegar, pickle juice and lemon juice. Now we're going to start with cabbage juice. This isn't just blue water, water that I added dye to. It's just boiled purple cabbage. So what you're going to do is you're going to pour your cabbage juice into your little bowl. Put cabbage juice in all of your little containers. Fill them up about three quarters of the way. They don't have to all be exact. Now we need a control. 
We need something that we're not going to add anything to to see if our water actually does change. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick one, you're going to put a lid on it, and set it aside. This is your control. Let's start over here to baking soda. So you're going to get your spoon, put some baking soda on it. You don't need a lot. This is just a little container. You can just put some on the tip of your, your spoon. Put it in your container. And you're going to put your spoon aside so we don't use that. We are scientists, so we don't want to cross-contaminate. We're not going to use that spoon anymore. You put your lid on your container and shake it. And then set it down. Now, I think I want to use this pipette. This is a pipette. The way to use a pipette is you squeeze it. You put it in the liquid. And as it's in the liquid, let go of squeezing. And it'll bring the liquid up into the pipette. Then you carefully put this over into one of your containers. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That was cool. <laughs> okay, now I don't want to reuse this. So I'm going to set it aside with the other with the spoon that I used. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to put this lid on here so I don't mistakenly put something else in. But look at that. That changed into a purple color. Let's see what salt does. Salt would be kind of cool. Do the same thing like you did with the baking soda. Just a little tip of it. Put it in your container. Set your spoon aside so you don't reuse it. Put the lid on. Shake it. That's a really pretty blue. Now next we have, oh, this one. This is pickle juice. This is dill pickle juice. How many of you like dill pickles? Remember with the pipette, squeeze it. Put it in the liquid, let go so that it goes up into the pipette. Put it in your container, and then put your pipette in your discard pile. Let's put a lid on this. Wow, where did the blue go? That's kind of cool, it took away the blue. All right, and now we have our last pipette, and this one is lemon juice. What do you think is going to happen when we add lemon juice? Let's see. Wow. Wow, this turned into like a magenta color. That's really cool. So did these all change? Now I can't tell if my baking soda and my salt changed unless I compare it to the control. And then I look, well the baking soda is slightly lighter not too much lighter. So on your left hand side, I want you to put your pinks and your purples. And on the right hand side, I want you to go lightest to darkest, and then put your control in the middle. This is neutral. Now your control is neutral. It's not acidic, it's not basic, it's neutral. But let's think about lemon juice. When we say lemon juice, how many of you crinkled up your eye again? Because you're like, oh, thinking about that lemon? Because lemons are what? They're sour. Things that are acidic are sour. So what we've noticed here is that vinegar, our lemon juice, and our pickle juice, these are all kind of purpley. These are our acids. And over here, these changed a little bit. They didn't change much, but they changed a little bit. These are our bases. Now, can we turn these back to neutral? Can we get this back to this? How do you think we could get it back to neutral? What if we add them back together? Let's see what happens. It started to turn blue again. So how did we get it back to neutral? Well, we added acids and bases. So when we added the acids and bases together, we got back to neutral. So this is something you can do at home. Find someone, talk to them about making some cabbage water. It's just boiled purple cabbage. 
and then pick things. You can use baking soda, vinegar, pickle juice, lemon, whatever you can find at your house. Try it. That'll be fun. Today we're going to be doing a very cool activity that's going to show us how we can help the biosphere. The biosphere is the section of Earth that is alive. So things that grow, things that are plants or animals, birds, bees, trees, grass, all of it is included. One of those things includes salamanders or amphibious beings that live on land and in water. Looking at our material today, I bet you're wondering just what we're going to do. Well, I have with me a little cutout of a salamander. Salamanders, as you can see, they look a little bit like lizards. They crawl on the ground, they've got four legs. They actually move a little slower than lizards. Salamanders live in water, breed in water, and then they have to move to the forest. While moving to the forest, Sometimes they encounter a road. And as we all know, cars travel on roads. Today, we are going to help a salamander cross the road. Looking at all of our materials, we've got a little piece of cardboard, we've got some pipe cleaners here, we've got a straw, we've got some markers, scissors, a ball of clay, some string, a couple of sticks, and a couple of colored pencils. In case we have some time, we can color our salamander in. And right now, I want you to take your sheet of cardboard, take one of the strips of blue tape, peel it off, and you're going to put it right in the center of your sheet of cardboard. And this blue strip of tape is going to be our road. So I'm gonna use my marker, and I'm just going to draw a few little lines so that everyone knows and can see it is indeed a road. Then I'm going to take a little piece of my other piece of blue tape and I'm going to attach my string to the back of my salamander. Because we want to make sure that the salamander can actually use our roadway crossing. So we've got to put them on a string so we can pull them across. And then I'm going to use all of my materials to build the waterway, the roadway crossing, and the forest. One of the things that I like to do, as well as just about every single architect and engineer around the world, is to draw out a plan first. And I'm going to figure out the best way for a salamander to cross the road. So around the world, and especially throughout the United States, we have developed all different types of animal crossings. Some of these crossings exist in the form of bridges, some in the form of tunnels. Others have actually gotten people involved. We have animal crossing brigades where people actually go out, pick up the animals, or block off traffic so the animals can cross safely. So now that I've got my little plan drawn, I'm gonna go ahead and begin. So humans play a huge part in protecting the biosphere. If not for us, our little animals would have some trouble. It takes a long time for animals to evolve. And so in us taking the time to engineer pathways like this, we actually help to ensure their survival. Now we can do this for plants and animals. Remember, the biosphere encompasses both. So when it comes to animals, we can engineer uh, pathways, but when it comes to plants, we can engineer gardens, right? We can engineer national parks, ways to keep that safe for everything that lives within.
the kids had so much fun on Tuesday that they wanted to stay longer today. The kids were like, what now? What now? What now? So we kept doing more activities with them. And then it was like, okay, your park is now closed. We have to go. <laughs> so it was fun. It was a lot of fun. These individuals are truly committed. They, they don't see this as a job. They see this as a passion. And I believe that they get uh, just as much fun and gratification from it as, as, as the kids do. Uh, most of the kids wish for a day three. They're saying, so Willow, when are you coming back? Is this van coming back tomorrow, next week? And um, even though we're trying to get to all of the parks and we are getting to all of the parks, it is like, wow, this is really making a difference. And so that does help. I'm really glad that we're doing this and I'm proud of my crew. I'm, um, and I'm really stoked about the results that we're getting. Um, the kids really dig it. Knowing that, that I'm part of that, that, that makes me feel good. I like it. I like being able to give things to kids that whether they have access or not any other time, that we are providing it right then, that day for them. You can't replace camp, a five-day program, um, with a couple hours at a at a park. Obviously, it would be great to be back at camp, just because that 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 is a whole different experience. But because we can bring a little piece of camp to them, uh, yeah, it's pretty satisfying. It's it's as if the mountain comes to you. So I guess it's nice being that mountain. Hello, I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I am proud of the Skyhook Eco Band program. It has been welcomed at Los Angeles City Parks as a way to visit children during the pandemic. Many of us came together with the same thought in mind. If kids can't visit Camp Skyhook, then camp will go to them. The Skyhook Ecovan is more than the sum of its parts. This collective effort means that children can engage the natural world and participate in great activities led by expert outdoor educators. This program supports that love of science, the environment, and interest in STEM subjects. The way the team leverages the outdoors to provide healing and mindfulness activities creates a perfect balance between extended learning opportunities and overall wellness. We hope to see you at your school soon. This is not a replacement for camp. It is our way of bringing hands-on learning directly to the kids wherever they are at. I'm proud of what we've achieved with our partners, but the best is yet to come. We look forward to serving our community at parks, at schools, by bringing experiential learning wherever we are needed. Probably come back next week, yeah. I, I hope um, they would come back. <laughs>